Goodbye. So you just leaving? You just leaving? I gotta your family. take care of these. Wow. It's been literally over a year. Wow. All right, Car. So we gotta figure out what to do. What are we gonna do? All right. Let's see. All right, Kari, we're gonna survive this. We're gonna make it. We got toys. Surgery is really just one of the most polarizing experiences, I think, for medical students. You either love it and are super excited or dread it completely. And in this video, I wanted to briefly go over how my surgery experience has gone so far, maybe what you can expect in your own if you haven't experienced it yet, and some of the things that I have done um, that I think really helped me during this surgery experience so that you can crush your surgery clerkship and just have a good idea of what surgery looks like in medical school. All right, so what does surgery, the surgery clerkship look like in medical school? Well, for me, it was eight weeks. This is relatively standard across most medical schools. And it's broken down where you do different aspects of surgery within these eight weeks. So here we have two weeks of what we call hospital surgical service, which is basically trauma, all the appendectomies, cholecystectomies. And then you have elective services, things under the umbrella of general surgery, like breast, endocrine, colorectal, and then you also have specialty services. So all of your surgical subspecialties, things like urology, CV, neurosurgery, etc. And for me, I did our hospital surgical service for two weeks. Then I did breast, cardiovascular, endocrine, and I'm spending my last week in the SICU or the surgery surgical ICU. And I definitely want to emphasize the fact that there are different aspects of a surgical clerkship or rotation because some can be very time consuming and others won't be but I think there's a misconception that no matter what when you're on surgery your hours will be crazy and that may be the case like on HSS how how long was I working from like you left the house around four and then got back around like seven yeah so you know for those kind of ones where it's like trauma or a very time consuming one you can have the stereotypic get there, get to the hospital 4.15, 4.30 and be leaving, you know, 14 hours later. Um, but in the same breath, I've had, I've had parts of the clerkship where it's been get to the hospital at 7.30 and leave at 3. So as a medical student, you'll often be working with residents. And what I found is one of the best ways to be helpful as a medical student is to be thinking about how you can make the life of the residents easier. So things like getting there early and grabbing numbers for your patients, which basically just means writing down the vitals, the labs, and any to-dos for the patients that you're covering, because that will save your residents a lot of time, to putting in progress notes or consult notes on patients, because Again, that's going to save your residents a lot of time to helping to set up and drep patients in the operating room because again, it's going to be saving people time. And I think all of this is just to say, if you're trying to figure out how you can be helpful as a medical student, especially on surgery, 
It is to be saving people time. But to be able to do that, you have to be very observant. So take the first day or so to just get the lay of the land, spend some time watching how things operate to be able to figure out where you can insert yourself to make other people's life easier, to make things move more smoothly and to accelerate the process. Now, another way that you can really shine on this clerkship is by one, knowing your patients and two, knowing a general approach to the surgery that you'll be performing on your patients. You really never have an excuse to not know your patients, to know their past medical and surgical histories, to know the indications and potentially contraindications to the procedures that you're offering them. So one thing that I found was very helpful was that I always had the list of patients on me that had all of this information readily available so I could briefly look at it to make sure I knew exactly what was going on and who we were operating on or who we were seeing in clinic before we actually saw that patient. So if there were any questions asked about this patient, I could know and I could answer them appropriately. Now, in terms of gaining the knowledge needed to really shine on this clerkship, this brings me to the kind sponsors of today's video, Traverse. Traverse is like a beautiful marriage between the organizational tool Notion and the study tool Anki. But what's really incredible is that they have designed a mind map template specific for me and my orthopedic interests called the OrthoPlug. So you can see that I have a mind map encompassing the different general aspects of orthopedics, from pediatrics to arthroplasty, oncology, spine, etc. And to create a new node, as they call it, we just go down here and now I have a section where I can focus on hand, for example. And you can build this note out however you'd like. Now this is just a template without notes in each of these sections, but we do have a few notes about the rotator cuff for you so you can see what that would look like. One of my favorite things about Traverse is that you can easily add videos about a topic that you're studying and you can watch those videos within Traverse. And you can also have all of your notes on that topic organized within these nodes. And if you know me, you know how important space repetition and active recall are, and they actually have incorporated these learning strategies so you can create flashcards of your notes and make sure you remember everything. This just briefly touches on the power of these mind maps and whether you're doing orthopedics and wanna use this template, or if you're in another part of your surgery rotation and wanna create your own, definitely check out this incredible tool to take full control of your learning. And thank you Traverse for sponsoring this video. So recap, we have become good members of the team by helping to make the lives of our residents a little bit easier. We've come prepared by one, knowing about our patients, and two, knowing a general level of information about what we're actually doing for our patients. Now the last thing that I think that we can do to really excel as medical students on our surgery clerkship is to actually know the skills of some of the things that we can do in the operating room, which in my opinion is the most fun part. And so for this, I wanted to show you guys something that I made that was completely inspired by the modern surgeon. I'm gonna leave their information in the link below because it is one of the best, if not the best page to follow for all of my people interested in surgery. But these two things that you can make really just after one trip to Home Depot can have you more prepared for the operating room than really anything else, especially those little gel pads that they sell on Amazon. So this board here allows me to practice skills such as passing suture and tying knots, which you will probably be doing quite a bit in the operating room. And this board here allows me to practice closing skin, which is oftentimes the highlight of a medical student's operating room experience. And what's awesome is when you set it up the way that I've set it up in these three layers, you can actually have your skin, your subcutaneous fat, and your fascial layer. So when you're closing it on this, it best represents what you're actually going to see in the operating room. Again, if you wanna see the full gambit on how you can utilize these constructs to master your surgical skills, make sure you check out The Modern Surgeon on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, really everywhere. Because just like anything, poorly simulated reps won't actually lead to mastery in any skill 
But using tools like this, I think you're gonna get absolutely incredibly simulated reps and you'll be able to really show out in the operating room. Now, before I go, I wanna briefly mention a community I've started called Teach As You Learn for pre-medical students to be able to receive mentorship from current medical students. If you're a medical student wanting to be a mentor or you're a pre-medical student wanting to be mentored, make sure you check it out. There's more information in the link below. But with that, we will call this video a wrap. I have missed you guys. I know it has been a minute since I put out a YouTube video, but I've been busy doing all the things that we've talked about. So <laughs> hopefully you could forgive me. But of course, until the next one, Keep evolving and we'll see you guys soon.